Hello everyone, I'm Alexis. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe, like, and click the bell for more content. Before we go into the topic, let me tell you that this info guide is only useful if you survive or win late phase. Because the current state of the EDCs is that if you get behind items or levels, you become useless. So unless your enemies are baboons that won't punish you after you lose lane, then you better check this other video of yours, so you can learn how to stop lane phase as a failure and other ADCs. Now, we're going to do a little bit different mechanic here. I will show you four scenarios and give you a couple seconds to figure out what would you do there, so you guys can understand better how important it is to be mentally prepared for every move that you need to do in order to win the team fight. Let's start with the easiest one, which even if you screw up a little bit, you are not that punished by it, and leave the hardest one where one mistake can cost you the game for the end. First, being proactive. The information that you have here is the teens is coming from base after backing and Choa has TP. We already dodged Tres Q and Graves use smoke screen. So let's think for a little bit. What would you do here? Try to boost that half HP Graves as fast as possible, play front to back, wait for Kiana to arrive, or wait for a Pike's hook. Take a couple seconds and let me know. Well, there might be different things that would work here, but for now, let's focus on what happened and what we can control. I think that waiting for an opening done by Pike or Echo will be okay, but those kind of reactive plays won't make you climb up since you rely on your team doing the right thing. So now that we take all those things out of the picture, here what you can do with Gale Force is ult and look for an easy burst on Graves. So you secure Drake and a fight just before Chogat reacts with the TP and Jinx arrives to Drake. As I said, there might be other plays you can do. 100% I could have played this team fight a lot better, but since this is the first scenario, you can tell that just a couple of good plays at a point like this can carry the team fight. And even if you make some mistakes, you still win it. So from this clip, you can learn that there are some fights where you need to be proactive and secure the win for your team. Second, being reactive. Here, different from last team fight, we don't have summoners. Since we're playing an ADC with no mobility, any skill that hit us could kill us easily. So first of all, let's focus on the formation and the right questions. How do we win this? How do our enemies win this? What can kill me? Which skills do I need to dodge? Take a couple seconds to think about this. First of all, the main job of an ADC is doing damage and surviving, so that's our goal here since we already took the Drake. Second, our enemies win this fight if our allies die or you get burst down. Since we can only control ourselves, we focus on that. Third, any skill shot with CC can kill me easy, so I need to be really careful with the hook and be 100% ready to get force away if necessary. Also, if Diana ults me, I will have to use my stopwatch or else I will just die, because Gale Force doesn't create enough distance with a dash to avoid Diana's ult in melee range. So, to summarize, I need to kill Thresh following up the Shen's town without getting hit by the hook, and then I have to kill Liana without letting her hit me with her ult. That is what I mean by being reactive here. We react to the possible threats that the enemy team has, like Thresh Q and Diana ult, and with that we win the team fight and avoid our team getting killed by Diana. Third, reactive and proactive. We will divide this clip into parts. When you have the opportunity to be proactive and when you have the opportunity to be reactive. First, we see Kaisa stepping up and mispositioning. Should we wait for Suck jumping in? Should we wait for Luke's Q? Should we get Force in and burst? Take a couple seconds to answer this. Well, I bet you guys already know the right answer here. We should punish her as soon as we see her overstepping. And I bet you know why the first two options were mistakes. That's because in a scenario like that, you need to be proactive and not rely on your team. Because the best thing that you can do is to focus on the decisions that you can take and not what your team could have done better. Now, we see Nuno stepping up. He's trying to root looks and us. Time to be reactive, but exactly when and how. Take a couple seconds here. Here, a lot of people will commit a mistake. They will think, I don't need to flash another root. The first two snowballs went to Lux, and even if he roots me, I can flash away his ult. Also, Nautilus is not even in hook range. But as soon as he roots you, Nautilus will have a chance to get close and ult you. And most people probably didn't notice that Liblang is coming from bot side. You can see her in the minimap, so if she follows up to that ult, you just died. Even if you flash away the Nunu's art, that's what you need to take in consideration not only what happens the moment someone sees you, but how your enemies can follow up on that and end up killing you. Since we avoided all those spells, we were able to win the teamfight pretty easy after the start. So in order to win teamfights like this, you need to be proactive to punish your enemies and reactive to avoid getting punished. 
last beast mode. Now, this is gonna be a little bit different since it will involve all that we have gone through in the past clips. Little details are thrown around the team fight and adapted to the moment things are happening. So first, you will see the enemies and think about what do you wanna do with your items and summoner spell. When to use exhaust, when to use gale force, when to use stopwatch and when to use your ultimate. Take a couple seconds to think about this. Now I'm going to mention some things that might have crossed your mind. Using Exhaust for Kai'Sa Dive, Liblang Dive or Camille Dive or Dunus Ultimate. Using Stopwatch to avoid damage from these four, use Gale Force to so the skills just from these four too, and well, overall, that is fine. But the thing is, what is the best way to use your Exhaust? What is the best way to use your Ultimate? What is the best way to use Stopwatch? And what is the best way to use Gale Force? Now we're gonna watch the clip and pause in every single second where you need to decide what you should do to win the team fight. Will you think how you're gonna deal with the upcoming threats after you take the decision? First of all, we see Nino coming with a snowball to us. Do you get first away, dodge it with stopwatch, or just take it and exhaust after to avoid the possible R damage? Think about it. Well, the thing that you need to do here is casting your R just before Nunu's snowball hit, so you do your old animation while you are in the air, denying the CC that he will do in this case. But maybe you ask yourself, why even get hit here? Well, because we farm and we are not behind, we know that we can actually kill this Nunu pretty fast if he comes in many range and we hit him with our best weapons. And also, the most important thing is that Zack was flanking the whole time, so they will have to deal first with Zack to get to us. Now that we have dealt with Nunu, we saw Kaisa using R to try to kill Silas, so she is not a threat for now. If she gets close, I can easily get for a way to get out of her range while dealing with LeBlanc. Now, you need to think, LeBlanc is obviously going to jump on me because Silas is in stasis and I'm exposed. Should I stop watching her damage? Should I exhaust it? Or just get for away? Take a couple seconds to think. So the answer here is to exhaust her. Why? Because if she doesn't come up and try to kill me, I will just have free damage. And 3 hits with so many chakrams should be enough to leave her very low or kill her. She only takes 2 and almost dies. If I hadn't exhausted her there, I would have probably insta died. Also, we could have tried to get forced to secure the kill. But yeah, that should even be a question. We all know that is a bad idea in a team fight like this. Now you're gonna understand why I hadn't used the stopwatch before. Not for Nunu, nor for the blank. The only counterplay I had against Camille was my stopwatch and creating a space after R with my Gale Force. And you might wonder, why stopwatch and not exhaust? Well, some of you might know that exhaust doesn't reduce true damage. That's why exhaust was useless against Camille, since her main damage is her Q, which is true damage. Watch it again and see how quickly everything happens. Now you guys are closer to Challenger ELO that you were 10 minutes ago. I hope this was useful. If you like this kind of content, consider subscribing, liking the video, leaving a comment and hitting the bell so you don't miss a new one. Thank you for watching and see you next time.